Lowering the language requirements is a must-needed change uh, that we've heard directly from the community on. Welcome back to Moose and Loose. My name's David. We're even joined by Boo today. Today, we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. We've got Trudeau head bobbing with some gays, removing the Canadian flag. He's changing the rules on immigration. He's given the big middle finger to Canadian nurses. Last week, Mark Holland had that big meltdown about going on a road trip and having Canada burn all that crap. Well, Pierre Polyev just, he rips them straight on that crap. Mr. Speaker, last week, the health minister uh, went into a wacko rant accusing parents who take their kids on a road trip of, ro of locking them up in a car for 10 days straight without a washroom break, causing the whole world to burn. <laughs> All because we proposed that the government take taxes off gas so that Canadians could have a summer break. Will this health minister break into the same hysteria over his boss's use of a gas guzzling private jet to vacation all around the world. <laughs> right on the money, Pierre. Mr. Speaker, uh, we face an existential crisis in climate change. The conservative solution, uh, you'd have to drive. I was wrong, and I admit it. It wasn't 37,000 kilometers. It was 44,000 kilometers to get the benefit that they're talking about. I don't know what he is talking about. I did the math three different ways on that video. No matter how you slice it, the maximum is like 14,000 kilometers. And what they want to do is cut not only dental care, not only cut child care, not only cut pharmacare, but end our climate action and return to the days when the Conservative Party would go into climate conferences and attack the action the world was taking to save our planet. I will stand for climate change and so will this party, Mr. Speaker. His wacko math gets even worse. He's talking about <laughs> vacations of 44,000 kilometers. Those are the vacations his, his boss takes in a taxpayer-funded, fuel-guzzling private jet. The vacations for which conservatives want to give Canadians a break is to a local campground where they can support the local economy. We know Canadians can't go abroad. All they can do is get in their small vehicle and have a small break why won't the government take the tax off so that they can afford to do that i mean just looking at the climate numbers we've got it right here it says distribution of carbon dioxide emissions worldwide this is 2022 look at this china 30 almost 31 percent where's canada way down here 1.5 percent if we cut our emissions in half it would do nothing Canadians going on road trips are not the monsters. Mark Holland is dead wrong. Mr. Speaker, it seems that we have in fact underestimated the wacko math of the Conservative Party of Canada. According to Sarah Hastings Simon, an associate professor at the University of Calgary of Faculty of Science, and she crunched the numbers, the, the alleged numbers of the Conservative Party based on the, the savings, and her, her calculation, someone would have to drive 44,000 kilometers, not 37,000 kilometers, Mr. Speaker. 44, so you could in fact drive from the North Pole to the South Pole and back and you would have some kilometers left. These are the type of mathematics that these people are doing, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, if that particular minister had his way, Canadians wouldn't even be allowed to drive to the grocery store because he wants to abolish roads. He says we should not fund any more roads and then has the audacity to call other people wacko. Most Canadians don't want to put on an orange jumpsuit or climb a building. They just want to take their kids for a merciful break from this miserable, broken economy. So will the government accept our common sense plan to take the tax off gas and diesel so Canadians can have a summer? Pierre is right on it every time. You can't, in fact, drive from the, the North Pole to the South Pole. There are no roads. I'm sure they'll find ways to blame me for that. Leave alone the fact that there are two oceans. But if you were to drive from Canada's most northern city, accessible by road, Tuk Tuk Yuk Tuk, in the Northwest Territories, and then you drove to the most southern city, accessible by, by road, Tierra, Tierra del Fuego, in Argentina, you would have to drive 16,000 kilometers at an average speed of 100 kilometers an hour without stopping. It would be 116, 60 hours, Mr. Speaker, and you're only halfway to the savings claim by the Conservative Party of Canada. 
Gibo, man, it's just embarrassing. Like, all right, are, are we doing this? We're doing this. Okay, Gibo. Gibo's trying to be clever, saying you can't drive to the North Pole because there's no roads. There's an ocean. Guess what, Gibo? There's no road right here. There's no connection between Panama City at the end here. This whatever this is called, Yavisa, over to Colombia. There's no road right here. You can't actually drive North Pole to South Pole. So stop using that. It's just dumb, man. The level of hypocrisy on that side of the house is nothing short of astonishing. The Prime Minister is literally jet-setting around the world on his gas-fueled jet. And the Health Minister says, you know what, kids, you can't go on a family trip because it will cost the planet to burn. We have the simplest common sense motion right now that will save Ontario families $592. That might mean nothing to them, but it means a lot. So will they listen, have some compassion, and ask the tax so families can make memories and enjoy their time together? Yeah. That the savings that the Conservative Party of Canada is claiming are simply not true, Mr. Speaker. Let me let me quote Dan McTee, a former Liberal MP, but a vocal and no fan of mine, I might add, Mr. Speaker. He said when asked about that proposal from the Conservative Party, he said, and I quote, I'm in the wilderness, Mr. Speaker. He said that there's no way that the savings that they're claiming, and he's, he's at the head of the Canadians for affordable energy, there's no way that the savings that they're claiming are true, one. And number two, it would cost the government billions of dollars to, to, of taxpayers' money. So where are they going to cut, Mr. If you look at Guy Bo's body language, he always talks with his hands up like this, which is like a stop sign, right? That means stop, stay away. He also does one finger, two finger points. He's very accusatory. This man, he knows what he's spewing his lies and his body language supports his, he's not talking with open arms, open palms. He's not a welcoming, he knows it's garbage. Mr. Speaker, nobody believes a word that side of the house says. They have completely lost trust in Canadians. They've caused chaos, they've caused crime. They've caused complete despair, despair. People are using food banks at the highest record level they've ever used in their life. Nobody believes what they're saying. 35 cents a liter at the pumps, do you know what that will save? Cost to ship the food. It will allow families to actually feed their families and most importantly will take off the stress that is cr creating mental health crises in this country. So while they stand over there and say that, we will fight for this, will they? Yeah! So she basically said there, yeah, it's the, the not only the gas, but also incorporating some of the cost of food there. I, I don't understand where the liberals are going with this 44 or that, like... <laughs> Even the last calculation I did, I just did straightly bit based off of their numbers, 8.9 liters per 100 kilometers, you multiply that, like, it doesn't, the math does not add up, not even remotely close. I don't know how their numbers keep growing and growing. They're just so bad at math, and it just proves their first numbers were wrong, so they did the math wrong and then presented that to across Canada with wrong numbers, and then they called themselves out and said they're bad at math, and then they gave us even worse numbers. Like, you can't make this crap up. Look, it's Justin Trudeau, road trip with Ella Grace and Zav. Oh yeah, having a nice road trip, Trudeau. I th aren't you gonna make the planet burn, buddy? <laughs> What a load of hypocrisy. Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleague led her question saying that nobody believes what anyone in the government has to say. It's not us who's saying it. Mr. Speaker, one of the people who spent tens of thousands of dollars to take conservative MPs on a junket to London to wine and dine them so they would be his mouthpiece in this chamber is saying that he's lost in the wilderness. Mr. Speaker, there are academics who have studied their proposal, the cost savings they say will accrue to families, that would say you had to go to the North Pole, to the South Pole and back in order to make that a reality. She started her question before Mr. Speaker talking about hypocrisy. I'd remind her once again, she votes against the measures that she shows up for the announcements for in her writing. Yes. <laughs> It just supports my previous notion, uh, Sean Fraser becoming more and more unhinged and arrogant. This is coming from buttoned up, tight lipped lawyer Sean Fraser. And the guy is just starting to run his mouth like a drunken sailor. Something to note here, just jumping back earlier, you can see Pierre, but you got Jamil Giovanni sitting next to him. So I'm not sure what the protocol, how that works, but he's moved him up to that seat there. Jamil Giovanni is a heavy hitter when it comes to debate. The guy knows how to squash a fly. <laughs> so it's going to be really exciting to see him go more toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I hope they put him up there. and Because a guy like that, you can just see him just ripping apart Sean Frazier or whoever, any of them, Gia Bo Balsen out, etc. Okay, jumping out of the house, we've got a whole bunch of clips, as you can see up here, to get to. So this one is very 
appalling. We've got handing out citizenship like it's candy. So Mark Miller announced that basically they're going to allow not only just caregivers to get easier immigration, but anyone who can't speak English very well or at all. Like what? Let me get this straight. So the world event happens. They force people to do something. If they don't, they lose their job. We lose a whole bunch of nurses. Multiple years later, they still haven't lifted those mandates in places like British Columbia. Then now they're going to let caregivers from other countries come and get fast track immigration versus taking care of the people they forced to lose their jobs. I'm also pleased to share that we are lowering out of uh, fairness the language requirements to Canada Language Benchmark 4, uh, Benchmark 4 under these new PR on arrival pilots. Our aim is to strike a balance between breaking down the barriers case caregivers face to get PR and selecting newcomers who will be resilient to changes in the labour market. Lowering the language requirements is a must-needed change uh, that we've heard directly from the community on and will align with other programs in my department uh, as well as provincial programs creating better consistency and fairness for all applicants. Caregivers will still have the needed language skills to work in the caregiving field. Let me be clear about that. So basically, if you're a caregiver, you still have to have language skills, but if you're not a caregiver, they're just going to let you in. What a disaster. What a failed, horrible policy. You know what this does? Well, down in Richmond, there is a lot of businesses that don't even have English on the signs, which is illegal. You have to have English on the signs. But what ends up happening, you have so many people, it got to a point where they just started doing everything in Chinese. There's even building meetings where you have like the, the reading the minutes and all that kind of stuff, strata meetings. They're all done in Chinese and people would complain, well, it's not in English. And they would just shrug their shoulders and like, well, that's you're the minority here. Like it, it gets to that point. That's what happens when you have too many people who their primary language is another language. They're not pushed to learn English, which is the main language of Canada or French. It changes the culture and it starts to erode and destroy Canadian culture. And now I can only imagine that's happening the same thing in, in, in Toronto now with the rise of how many people coming, 1.2 million per year, people coming from India, speaking Punjabi. There needs to be strict regulations that you can speak English and you know it well and people need to know the laws in, in Canada. These fools are just bringing in more people to vote for them because they're failing. It doesn't really get much better from here on out, but so here we are. The Liberals didn't show up initially, as you just watched. They did eventually show up. Well, where were they? Because it says here, Monday morning, house is sitting. Where are the Liberals? Well, they were outside. I can guarantee you weren't expecting this clip. Justin Trudeau has removed a Canadian flag. There's two outside. And he put up a pr pride trans flag instead. Canada has 5% population that is gay trans. <laughs> Okay, let's read some body language here. Look at this guy. Does this look like someone who's comfortable? I know a lot of people say he's gay or whatever. I don't think he's gay. Mr. Prince Charming, rich. He could choose any woman he wanted. He chose Sophie Trudeau. She's a pretty woman. He failed as a husband. He's failing as a leader. Regardless, I don't think he's a gay man. I think he's just, he chose the LGBTQ2 plus whatever movement as an easy group of 5% of people that would back him. And then there's a larger supporting group that would be wrapped in with that. It was just a p political play because look at him. He does not feel comfortable around these people. Now, I have mentioned before, anytime there's nodding when someone's speaking, it's either, yeah, I got this. Like usually when they're asking him questions, queuing up the answer. They know how to answer this. I'm feeling comfortable. I got this. Now, there's only one case where that isn't the case. And that's when you nod with pursed lips. Yeah, Sheila's like, she's great. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's conforming to the social norms without rocking the boat, nodding in agreement, but not actually agreeing. Like, look at him. He's got a furrowed brow. You can see the muscle there flexed on his head. He's not comfortable with the singing and stuff. Like, it looks like he's smelling a fart right now. <laughs> like, look at him. And on the opposite here, look, we got Bolsonaro, which I believe he's a gay man. I mean, he's looking at these these lads like they're a bucket of KFC. <laughs> look at 
at him. Like, this guy genuinely is happy. He's comfortable around these people. This, These are his people. Trudeau, though, he, does, he looks very awkward and not comfortable. This year, we've seen too many people, including politi some politicians, shown that they're willing to target vulnerable trans youth, to deny them the freedom to seek life-saving life gender-affirming care, all for narrow political gain. Oh, what a load of crap, Trudeau. You know what? I get a lot of people message me who are trans and they, they say thank you for the videos. They're all closet conservatives. <laughs> I think you're in for a rude wake-up call, buddy. There they go, disgracing Canada, raising a flag that is not the Canadian flag. Get out of here with this. You know, I have gay friends and you know what they, they don't want? They don't want this. They don't want their identity to be someone who's gay. Like that's just some, as Dorn Peterson said, it's some hedonistic primal, I don't know what his exact words, but your, your primal urges. Why would that be your identity? Why wouldn't your identity be what you've achieved in life, what you're going for in life, who you are? You know what I mean? Like for myself, I was someone who my goal was to become an artist in the video game industry. I did that. I moved on, went on to YouTube. I've actually just recently, I've I hit a hundred million views on all my channels. I never thought I would do that. So thank you very much. It's all because of you guys that I've been able to hit that after my other channel was illegally deleted. I was terrified of heights. I lost a hundred pounds. I became a mountaineer. Now I'm going out and doing world first summits. And now I'm doing my best to try bringing the truth to you guys and helping Canadians as best possible with the knowledge so we can get our country back to what it was. So that's that's what my identity is. It's not a straight man. Hey guys, I'm a straight man. Raise a flag for me. I'm a straight man. That's why my gay friends, they don't identify themselves as this. They identify them, themselves as like an electrical engineer that's helped build some huge infrastructure, a new dam that's providing, you know, water, or water treatment plant or a clean system that has helped this town or this city. Why don't they just raise a flag for the furries, the LARPers of the country? Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, furries are people who wear the, they, they dress up like teddy bears. Uh, and then LARPers are people who play, fight with swords and like Dungeons and Dragons in real life. But anyways, because I'm guessing those percentages of people in Canada are like one or two, three, five percent as well. Why don't we raise flags for those people too? Or people who hate onions? I guess it's a revenge to Canadians for hating his father. <laughs> We've got this report that's going around. Uh... A new explosive report shows that basically multiple members of parliament were uh, communicating with foreign agents. We begin with a stunning allegation of unethical and possibly illegal behavior by some members of parliament and senators. A new report by the Security and Intelligence Committee suggests a few are knowingly engaging in foreign interference for their own benefit. From Ottawa tonight, here's CTV's Judy Trent. A new report reveals that a small number of MPs helped foreign nations, mainly China and India, meddle in Canadian democracy. After analyzing a trove of top secret documents, a National Security and Intelligence Committee found some MPs and senators were semi-witting or witting participants in foreign interference. We are absolutely uh, committed to evolving and strengthening the measures that are in place. We're the ones that asked the National Security Intelligence Committee to do this work. Before and during election campaigns, some politicians engaged in unethical and even illegal behavior. Examples included communicating with embassies to help mobilize support from diaspora groups, accepting funds from proxies, and providing privileged information to foreign operatives. After getting elected, one MP passed on information to India. The names of politicians benefiting from foreign interference were not named. Much of this uh, interference occurs not at the very highest levels, but at the nomination levels. Once elected, those unnamed politicians were also working to persuade fellow parliamentarians on behalf of foreign actors. The report says that political staffers were sought after as proxies and journalists were targeted. During the foreign interference inquiry, the Prime Minister and his cabinet testified they didn't receive some of the intelligence. The biggest issue is information. How do we find who has the information, when do they have it, and who are they giving it to? The federal government has tabled legislation to fight foreign interference with potential prison time and steep fines. All parties support passing the bill quickly. Important because foreign actors are targeting all parties at every level of government. Well, we do know, remember that situation with Min Doan and the busloads of uh, young Chinese uh, teenagers to, to go vote? Like, they need to release these names. This is 
appalling. China needs to go buzz off is what it needs to do. It's just another scandal every single day. These people need to be removed from Canada. Whether they're born here or not, they need to have their citizen citizenship revoked and give them a one-way ticket out. I'm sure North Korea would take them. See what the people have to say. Uh, Canadians have the right to know these MPs and senators must be exposed. Shocker. Those seeking any office in the country shouldn't hold citizenship of any other nation. Time to reform. Yeah, I saw a graph on this. There's a lot of uh, liberals that have citizenship in other countries. Why are these politicians not named? List them in alphabetical order. Well, regardless of the party, they need to be charged. Yes. These people have defected from Canada and they're working with foreign governments against us. The country I grew up in no longer exists. I'm ashamed to be Canadian as of late. Some of these comments in here are hilarious because they're so uneducated and stupid. Pro-liberal garbage. We got this clip here posted by the pleb, who's uh, this at a, uh, a pride rally. All right, we're here currently at the protest. We got a bunch of young kids here with their Arab parents, and they are stomping the pride flag here at the protest. The Arab community is sending a message, I believe, to the woke that they are not accepting of this, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes. Any message you'd like to send today? To just leave your kids alone. What? Yes. Leave the kids alone, she says, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good to see the pleb out. I hope you're doing better, brother. He's been having some mental health problems, so I hope you get back at it soon. Good to see you out, though. Next up, we got a list here of Trudeau scandals. Let's go down memory lane here. Not forget, we got the SNC Love and Love scandal. 50 million. We charity on 900 million. Arrive scam, uh, 60 plus million. Buying stocks at a company that doesn't exist, $2 billion. That's a lot of money. Setting up phony infrastructure products, $100 billion. Yeah, that's like what the Asian Infrastructure Bank, I'm guessing that's alluding to. Uh, <laughs> just giving a hundred million to China and just oh, kiss that goodbye. Blaming conspiracy theorists for government accountability, priceless. Some things can't be stolen, but everything else, there's Justin Trudeau's liberals. Don't forget the eight billion green slush fund. Canada resigned her seat after being able to account for over three billion dollars. Where did that money go? Yeah, Trudeau's net worth. Hmm. This government is terrified of losing power to a party that is not a controlled opposition if the CPP does not go full attack mode and investigate every scandal or pose the ones hidden th this far. Then we have more of the same coming in the future. Yeah, there's going to be forensic audit and there's going to be people going to jail. There better be. You forgot about the 200 million he put into a casino that collapsed and went bankrupt shortly after. Yeah, wasn't that one of Trudeau's buddies? I can't remember. There's also the uh, KMP uh, consulting garbage where he just keeps flushing all our money to his buddy there. Was it Dominic Barton? All that crap too? Yeah, you forgot money laundering to Ukraine. Don't forget the billions to Zelensky, 5.3 billion to Philippines. <laughs> this just goes on and on. <laughs> you have to laugh about this because this is so stupid. Next up, we got this one posted by Ezra Levant. Those are $800 Mew Mew sneakers by Prada. It's a sin that someone made those shoes. Double sin that the taxpayers are funding them. Yeah. Giant Tiger sells better looking footwear. <laughs> this one coming from CTV, which I'm surprised about. The far right is set to make huge gains in European elections. It could define the next five years of European politics. Yeah, I mean, the woke garbage has got to go. There's no reason to hold big parades because certain males, very small percentages are attracted to other males or females attracted to other females. That's ridiculous. We should be holding big parades for the nurses who do backbreaking hours to keep Canadians safe, to reduce pain, the firefighters putting out fires, putting their lives on the line, paramedics working ungodly hours and having to see the worst stuff imaginable. Where are the parades for them? As I said, my gay friends think it's all ridiculous. That stuff's got to end. So we've got uh, Julie uh, Dabrusin. We'll just show you here. This uh, She's a liberal, but this story has nothing to do with her being a liberal and supporting Trudeau. Just as a human, we're talking about Julie. So she's Jewish. Thus, she's the member of parliament for uh, Toronto uh, Danforth. This is her office. There are 25 members of parliament in, in Toronto. None of their offices were defaced except for hers because she's a Jew. And if we look here, it's all the same stuff you get from the Palestinians. Julie, your hands are red, blah, 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 20,000 children perished. Like, this is not a culture of happiness and peace. Julie has done a grave disservice to Canada by supporting Trudeau and being a liberal, but she's not over in 
Israel and like pushing the button to send the big boomers over. Like, come on. This hasn't really been a problem up until now, but I guess you just get more and more people from this culture that doesn't want to play nicely in the sandbox. The Edmonton Oilers are the only Canadian team left in the playoffs. Despite receiving $1.4 billion from taxpayers this year, CBC decided not to air the Oilers game. Not only that, the CBC just got $15 million dished out to the executives for bonuses. They're not going to air the Oilers games, really? They have the best player in the league. They're making it to the finals. They're not airing the games. What a disgrace. Jumping over to my group. Let's see what memes we got today. <laughs> PM has no plans of stepping down and wants to run against Pierre Polyev. What the heck is he planning? Yeah, I mean... I'm wondering if they're working with China to do some real big foreign interference and they're trying to rig the election because they can't win. They can't win with real votes. And as a speculation, let's just see what happens because if it's somehow rigged that Trudeau liberals win, you will see, we all know a civil war will just full break out in Canada. Happy Canadian Pride Month. Canadian Pride, yes. No more hedonistic barbarian urges. We all have barbarian urges. Why would you define your existence on that. Income tax, the fine you pay for the crime of being productive and useful. Do all fairy tales begin with once upon a time? No, many of them begin with, if I'm elected, I, pro <laughs> I promise. Yeah. Liberal versus conservative, lives rent free, eats for free, sleeps in Archie's bed, sleeps with Archie's daughter, considers himself morally superior to Archie. Conservative, pays for rent, buys the food, Pays all the bills, yeah. My life sucks, I have nothing to live for. But you do. Who said that? <laughs> Taxes. <laughs> That's going to wrap up this episode. Let me know what you guys think about all the pride stuff. I think it's got to end. It's, it's ridiculous. And it's a disgrace taking down our flag. If they want to put up that flag, like I said, put it on a wall or put up a flag somewhere else, whatever. But by that same account, then why are there no flags for LARPers and furries and, like I said, people who hate onions or people who love the color purple? <laughs> what other groups are there? Gardeners. Put a flag up for gardeners. Where's the gardener's flag? Where's the flag for people who love Italian food? When does it stop? Thanks for watching the end of the video. I greatly appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe. We'll keep fighting for freedom. I'll see you guys in the next one.